Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this podcast, I'm going to talk about the secret of life. And what that means is I'm going to talk about the big picture of DNA and genes and proteins and how those are all tied together. And so basically, all life has some similarities, from a panda bear to bacteria to a chimp to a mushroom. All of them are made up of cells. They have DNA. So they have a lot of similarities. But if we, what is life really made up of? So if we were to take a panda bear and pull a chunk off of that panda bear and slice it thin, in, look at it under microscope, what we would find is that it's made up of cells. And it's got a nucleus in the middle, it's got mitochondria, but if we were to tease apart those cells, what we would find is that most of the cell is actually made up of proteins. And so when you look at me, what you're really looking at is proteins. But if we were to pull those proteins apart, what would we eventually get to? things called amino acids. And so those amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, which are the building blocks of cells, which are the building block of all life on our planet. And so then what is DNA? Well, we might know that it's deoxyribonucleic acid, but it basically is a recipe to make proteins inside you. And if we had the strands of DNA found inside you, we could make a brand new you. And so let's start with an analogy. Imagine we have a cookbook and we want to use that cookbook to make something like pizza. Well, basically the first thing we do is we wouldn't want to rip out the page, so we would copy down the recipe for pizza. We, the chef, would then put the ingredients together and then eventually make the pizza. And so think of the order that I just put those out. So we got a recipe, we then have a chef, and then we finally have the ingredients, and we can use that to make a pizza. So now let's look at DNA, because DNA is essentially just a cookbook. It's a cookbook to make proteins, and those proteins again make you. And so what's the first thing that we need out of that cookbook? Because all of the recipes stay in the cookbook. Well, we have to copy that recipe down. And so in the cells, we do that by copying down that DNA into something called messenger RNA. We then have to cook it. And so who are the cooks and who's going to put those amino acids together? Well, in your body, those are called ribosomes, and those are found inside the cell. What are the ingredients of proteins then? Those are going to be the amino acids. And so what is DNA? It's simply a recipe book for all the proteins inside your body. But it stays locked within the cookbook. Or in us, it would be locked within the nucleus. And it just sends its messenger, messenger RNA, out to make the proteins. And so this is what's called the central dogma of life. And so the DNA sits safe within the nucleus. It makes copies of itself, little bits of itself, called RNA, messenger RNA in this case. We then use that messenger RNA to make proteins, and that proteins make you. Now we could even draw a line between the DNA and the RNA in eukaryotic cells because the DNA will sit in the middle, and the RNA is going to be the only thing that moves out into the cytoplasm. So why is this the secret of life? Well, little bits of DNA are called genes. And so this could be gene 1, gene 2, and gene 3. And so basically, if we look at all life on our planet, all life has DNA. Where did we get that DNA? We got it from our parents. And where did they get it? From their parents and parents and parents and parents and parents back. And eventually, if we kept tracing that DNA, we'd find that it's not humans anymore. Eventually, it's something, a common ancestor to humans. And if we keep going farther back, eventually we get to this first form of life. And so what has happened? In, in other words, what is life? Well, life is simply bits of DNA that make proteins. Some of those, when played against their environment, do well, and they're passed on from generation to generation. And some of those genes don't do well at all, and they're lost. And so every living thing on our planet is simply made by bits of DNA, we'll call those genes, that have been selected for or against over time, creating the diversity of life that we have today. And I think that's pretty cool, and I hope that's helpful.